Brief Introduction to Current Transformer and Its Applications In Part 1, we talked about the basic principles of a current transformer and how it differed with a power transformer. In this part, we shall briefly discuss the characteristics of a current transformer with the help of an equivalent circuit model for an ideal CT. If this video was helpful for you, please consider subscribing to generalpack.com. Our goal is to make power systems intuitive. Our corporate sponsor for this topic is Illumiax.com. From Seattle, Washington. Contact them for industrial and commercial power system studies like short circuit, coordination, and arc flash studies. Illumiax.com also performs advanced studies like power quality, motor starting, grounding grid, reliability, transient stability, and snubber circuit studies. Visit Illumiax.com for these power system studies. Let us now consider the equivalent model of a current transformer. There are various parameters to consider. We will be going through them one by one. Let's begin by considering the parameters on the primary side of the current transformer. First, we have the parameter VP, which can be defined as the rated voltage on the primary side of the current transformer. This is the line side of the CTR connection. Next up we have IP, which is the current flowing through the primary side of the CT. The resistance components, RP and RS, are impedance parameters, driven by CT construction, and due to the generation of flux in the primary and secondary windings, this results in the generation of a leakage reactance, which can be observed in the equivalent model on both sides. XLP and XLS are parameters that describe the leakage reactance of the current transformer. It is responsible for a voltage reduction on the secondary terminal of the current transformer. Moving over to the secondary side, we have Vs which is the rated voltage on the secondary side of the current transformer. We have the excitation current IE, which is used to energize the magnetic core of the CT. It is also useful in calculations involving CT saturation. We will be talking more about CT saturation in a later topic. Furthermore, this excitation current quantifies the amount of CT error which is present in the circuit. The greater the value of IE, the more error being produced in the current transformer, and vice versa. The final current value is IS, which flows from the secondary winding towards the load. RC can be defined as the resistance responsible for the core losses, which include the losses incurred due to eddy currents, as well as hysteresis. Under normal conditions, these losses are constant since they are derived from CT construction. And finally we have ZM, which is an inductance responsible for producing the magnetic flux. This flux is critical for proper transformer operation. Another important parameter to consider is the CT burden which can be defined as the load connected to the secondary side. The CT burden is typically relay and meter impedance, as well as impedance of the wires that connect relays and meters. Again, these loads are connected directly to the secondary terminal. To summarize the discussion, transformer secondary voltage, magnetizing current, and CT burden are all closely linked with each other. This will be discussed in much greater detail in later topics. The examples used in this series are derived from SEL's article, Beyond the Neat Point, a practical guide to CT saturation. Rest assured, these are good and accurate examples. If mistakes are found, they will be described in detail on generalpack.com. In the next part, we will discuss about the accuracy of a CT model and its importance for protection and metering. We hope this topic and series is enjoyable and enlightening for students and professionals. If you find this content useful, please consider subscribing to generalpack.com. Making Power Systems Intuitive